Hello and thank you for your interest in this NPTEL online certification course on advanced process dynamics. I am P. A. Deshpande, an associate professor in the department of chemical engineering at IIT Kharagpur. This course has been designed for the students of undergrad degree in chemical engineering who are at their advanced stages or the master students of chemical engineering, doctoral students or active researchers who are interested in research involving process dynamics, process modeling and simulation, process control and process optimization are also expected to be benefited by the course. We will formally define the meaning of dynamics and process dynamics during the course of this instruction, but uh, to put it in the quickest and uh, shortest words, we can define a dynamical system as a system which undergoes change with time. So, dynamical systems will be the systems in which there would be at least one variable which changes with time. And if we look around, uh, we would hardly find any system or anything around us which potentially cannot change with time. Everything around us either in real life or in industry is susceptible to change and dynamical systems would be uh, such systems uh, which, which undergo change with time and we would be studying such systems in this course. Now, uh, to take a simple example, we can imagine that we enter a hot and humid room which is say at a temperature of 40 degree centigrade and we want a comfortable environment and we want the temperature to be maintained at say 22 degree centigrade. Obviously, what we will do is we will put an air conditioner which will control the temperature of the room. What we uh, very often do not consider is that apart from controlling the temperature of the room, there is something else which is also going on. As you enter the room, the temperature is at 40 degree centigrade and the temperature has to decrease to 22 degree centigrade. And after the temperature has been reached to 22 degree centigrade, it has to be maintained constant. So, what happens is that there is a period during which the temperature of the room changes. So, therefore, this is a dynamical system. To take an example from industry, uh, imagine that we have a petrochemical plant in which there is a fixed bed reactor and we want to maintain constant composition, constant temperature, constant pressure inside the reactor. Since we know that packed bed reactors are typically operated at steady state, we would assume that there would be a control system which would be maintaining all the properties associated with the system as constants. But before this condition of constant properties is reached, there would be a starter period uh, during which the properties would change with time. So, therefore, this is also a, an example of a dynamical system. So, while during the early education of chemical engineering, uh, the students are introduced to the concept of process dynamics during courses like process instrumentation and control or process dynamics and control or chemical process control or simply control engineering. The uh, real vastness of the domain of process dynamics is very often missed because the relevance is often taught with uh, interest to process control. But we would realize during this course that process, ad, uh, process dynamics in itself is a standalone and a vast domain of process engineering which needs attention and that is precisely uh, what has been the intention behind developing this course. So, to analyze the dynamics of a system, uh, we have basically two methods or two approaches. Uh, the one which is shown on the left hand side is the state space domain approach and the one on the right hand side is the transform domain approach. During the uh, early stages of undergrad education, uh, you get introduced to the transform domain approach. However, a very generic and a vast 
uh, approaches the state space domain analysis in which one can understand all the possibilities of uh, the system which uh, the system can sample and uh, we will initiate our discussion of this course by st space, state space domain analysis and subsequently towards the later part of the course we will come to transform domain analysis. The systems that we typically study are linear systems, but in reality majority of the systems are non-linear. So, therefore, we would take examples of non-linear systems and see how approximations which are made for the study of linear systems do conform to non-linear systems or, or where they deviate from the approximations. However, in all of these cases linear system analysis makes a good case for as a starting point for the analysis of non-linear systems and therefore, we will initiate our discussion with linear systems and we will subsequently graduate to more complex non-linear system analysis. The examples of temperature inside a room or temperature, pressure, concentration etcetera inside a reactor were the examples where the system was uh, operating in a continuous domain. However, these days most of the process control is employed using computers and computers generate as well as accept digital signals which are discrete. So, therefore, in discrete time domain we need to do the analysis. So, we will divide our course in continuous time domain analysis as well as discrete time domain analysis. So, here is an outline of the course we would divide our course into four parts the first part would deal with the analysis of linear systems in state space domain. After understanding the linear systems we will go to the state space domain analysis of non-linear systems and then we will do the analysis of linear as well as non-linear systems in transform domain and in either cases we will do continuous domain as well as discrete time domain analysis. This course would be inherently mathematical in nature. So, every topic that we would start would start with a mathematical technique and followed by this mathematical technique we will take an example from a process industry. So, uh, what you can see here is uh, representative examples we will take uh, much more of uh, than what has been uh, shown here. But on the left hand side you can see that we will typically take examples for example, uh, cooling of a body or dynamics of mixing tanks, complex reaction kinetics or reaction dynamics and stability. But as I mentioned the central premise of dynamical systems is the analysis of change. Now, changes take place in almost all domains of engineering as well as natural sciences. So, therefore, dynamical systems would be of interest to mechanical engineers, aerospace engineers, biochemical and biotechnologists and biologists and fundamental physicists as well. So, therefore, we would be taking examples from other domains of science and engineering as well making this entire analysis in the course truly multidisciplinary in nature. So, I will leave you with this word cloud which would give you an idea about every single topic and every single uh, analysis that we would be doing in this particular course. I wish you enjoy the course and uh, by the end of this course you get a better understanding of dynamical systems making you more comfortable in taking advanced courses on process dynamics and simulation and process control and also you develop a keen interest in process engineering systems and the underlying science in general. Thank you.